Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's episode of Whether or Not. I'm your host, Dan Guzman. And I'm your forecaster, Matt Yurisavik. So, Matt, I hear we have a dry weekend in store for this very exciting Thon weekend. Yeah, Dan, I think we do. Thon happening here on Penn State's campus Friday through Sunday. And if you're heading in or out of Thon throughout the weekend, it's really not going to be a bad weekend to do so. Temperatures will be increasing, and we may even see a little bit of sunshine. That sounds good to me, and Matt will have a little bit more on that coming up. And also in tonight's show, Matt will have a story on the record-setting January, and I will have a story on the disappearance of coral reefs in the near future. Also, Allison Gutlieber joins us with a feature on why we're seeing these warmer temperatures over the winter. But first, here's Nature in the News. Rising sea surface temperatures and acidic waters have been subject to new studies that indicate little to no coral reefs may exist by the year 2100. Currently, 70 to 90 percent of coral reefs are projected to disappear in the next 20 years because of climate change. Efforts to stop this decline by ocean restoration groups include transplanting lab-grown coral into dying reefs throughout the ocean. Although this method to replace the fragile organisms is very effective for now, rising temperatures and acidity are the most detrimental to preserving these habitats. Not only do these factors make new coral hard to grow, living corals also go through something called coral bleaching, where they release vital algae responsible for their vibrant colors we're used to seeing. These white corals are at a higher risk of dying without the symbiotic algae that help them carry out everyday processes. Cleaning up our beaches and lowering carbon emissions is ultimately the best way to hopefully make our oceans suitable for new coral growth. If you thought this past January was abnormally warm, you were right. Last week, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, announced that January of 2020 was the warmest January on record worldwide. The global land and ocean surface temperature was at an all-time high of about 2.05 degrees Fahrenheit above the average. This beat out January of 2016 by about 0.04 degrees Fahrenheit. Almost all regions around the world saw temperatures that were near or above the average. Even Antarctica saw a decline in sea ice along with the record-setting temperatures that were broken there a few weeks ago. And Chris touched on that in last week's episode. Not all regions were above average, though. The Arctic saw an increase in sea ice coverage as well as the strong polar vortex that kept cold air bottled up near the North Pole. The only area of the globe that was much below normal was Alaska. The northernmost state in the United States saw an average January temperature of about 11 degrees below average, which was the eighth coldest January on record for Alaska. Hi, I'm Matt Yurisavik, back with your Central PA forecast. We have a dry weekend ahead, and that is all thanks to our friend High Pressure, and that will set the scene for our weekend. High Pressure, as you can see, back to our west. We'll really be controlling the weather as we head through the weekend. We can see a sunny sky, mostly sunny sky, over much of the state for your day on Friday. Just a few lake effect snow showers up on Lake Ontario, but other than that, a mainly quiet day, especially here in Pennsylvania, but really all across the eastern seaboard. We are watching a storm system down to the south that was scooting off the coast, and that will be on its way out as we head through the day on Friday, and no weather is expected for your weekend here, just mainly sunny skies. And again, High pressure still in control there for Saturday, moves over just a little bit, just down to our southwest, and sunny skies are on tap again for your Saturday. So if you are coming here to State College and plan attending THON this weekend, 
You'll be coming to the Bryce Jordan Center. You may have to wait in a few lines to get in outside, but we will have sunny skies this weekend. And then for Sunday, we are watching increasing clouds. That will happen from southwest to northeast throughout the day. And that is because our high pressure system is beginning to weaken and push off the coast. And that will give way to a few rain showers, which we can see here through the Ohio Valley. Those will be moving our way as we head into our next work week. We could see some peaks of sunshine here for Sunday, but overall a mostly, a mostly cloudy day rather. And then for your Friday though, before we get to that Sunday, mostly sunny skies. It will be a chilly sunshine though. 35 degrees is that high temperature for you. Then as we head into the overnight hours Friday night, it will be clear but cold. 21 degrees will be your low. So if you're heading out, make sure you take a hat, maybe even some gloves because it will still be nice and chilly out there. For Saturday, though, our temps do rebound. We're back up to 45 degrees and more sunshine on the way for your Saturday. So a great weekend is ahead. And then, as I mentioned, those increasing clouds through the day on Sunday. But temperatures, again, up near 50. 49 degrees will be your high temperature here in central Pennsylvania. And that will be a very warm and welcome feeling as we've been dealing with a little bit of below average temperatures the past few days. So as our temperatures trend up, I think our feelings will also trend up towards these warmer temperatures as we all look forward to spring. Up next, Allison Gutlieber joins us with a feature on why our winter has been so warm. Since the beginning of 2020, we've seen above average temperatures moving into our forecast for January and now into February. These temperatures have made this winter feel warmer than the ones we've had in the past. I spoke to the Pennsylvania State Climatologist Kyle Imhoff to get a better understanding of what his job is and why we are experiencing these above average temperatures. One of the things we do in the State Climate Office is we provide weather data, um, historical weather information to any users across the state or stakeholders that may want that information. Um, so a lot of our work involves just sending data to different clients or personnel and also we partake in research here at the university. Kyle and his colleagues develop their own databases, but sometimes they retrieve data from regional climate centers. In addition to providing this data to their clients, the State Climate Office also looks at trends that are currently happening, such as above average temperatures this winter, starting in the last few months of 2019. So starting back in uh, really December and lasting through uh, mid-February now that we're in right now is that we've actually had a very positive Arctic Oscillation, um, which basically it's an index that measures the difference between pressures in the mid-latitudes and then uh, pressures in the polar regions. So when we're in a positive phase of AO or Arctic Oscillation, that indicates that basically the, the westerly winds at the upper levels are much stronger than they typically are during the winter season. And what that does, it also traps cold air and it, and it keeps it at bay in uh, parts of Canada and then northward toward the polar region. So we haven't had major uh, outbreaks of really cold air and that cold air has been sort of bottled up. Um, so we really, uh, thus far this year, we really haven't seen major cold air outbreaks across much of the northern, uh, North America at least, much, much of the continents. Most of the United States is having similar conditions to Pennsylvania, where the temperatures have been above average, giving both Pennsylvania and parts of North America a mild winter. The entire Pennsylvania winter season has been much above normal, which was not expected by climatologists when they looked in 2019. In the last few months of 2019, projections from the weather company indicated February in Pennsylvania was going to have near or slightly below average temperatures. We saw this isn't the case. If you looked at climate models, um, or at least models that go out several weeks or, or a month or two, there actually was a lot of guidance that would indicate that it was actually going to be a relatively chilly late January into February and that can just be attributed simply to the fact that the computer models didn't pick up on the fact that the uh, the jet stream would remain in a relatively zonal flow and cold air would mean, remain trapped in, in Canada and up in the polar region so we really didn't experience that cold air that was that was really well forecast or, or it was a, there was at least a good consensus in the models that that would take place. The average global surface temperatures have risen 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit since the 1880s, according to the U.S. government data. This increase is driven not only by temperatures around the globe, but also releases of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases by our human activities, which affect climate change. 
In terms of our above average temperatures relating to climate change, climatologists feel that research on it varies on how warming temperatures globally will impact Arctic oscillations and affect jet stream patterns. One thing that there, there may be some indications that as the Earth warms and it affects northern hemisphere sea ice, that may have some feedback effects on the Arctic oscillation, for example, and some of the atmosphere patterns. Um, but again, it's, it's difficult to exactly pin down how this will impact Arctic oscillations over the future. In the past decade, climatologists have seen when there's a negative phase of Arctic oscillation that the patterns are very extreme because they are strongly negative. This can be an indication of climate change and the effect of weather during the winter season in the northern hemisphere. Moving forward, at least what the current models indicate is that as we head into yeah, the latter half of February, March, and April, it looks like temperatures are at least favored to be above normal, so kind of a continuation of what we're seeing right now. If this above average temperature pattern continues into the spring months and even into summer, this will lead to milder than normal temperatures. As for precipitation looking forward, seasonal precipitation is what is expected as there are no signs of major departures from normal. From Penn State's Weather or Not, I'm Allison Gutlieber. I'm Matt Yarosalik, back with your extended forecast, which will take us through next week. But first, we have to get through this weekend, this Thon weekend here at Penn State. And we will be looking at mostly sunny skies throughout at least the first half of our weekend. Temperatures 35 there for your Friday when you're waiting in line to get into the Bryce Jordan Center. There for the start of Thon, mostly sunny skies as well. Then for your Friday, more sunshine on the way, a high of 45 degrees. And then temperatures still trending upward, a high of 49 there for your Sunday. Increasing clouds, though, ahead of our next storm system, which will impact your Monday. But for Thon, heading in and out of the Bryce Jordan Center this weekend, it's looking absolutely beautiful, and no weather will be in your way this weekend on this Thon weekend. Monday, though, that is when rain does move into the area. We'll be looking at the rain through Monday and maybe into the early morning hours there for your Tuesday. A high of 40 degrees is the average high so we'll be just above that for Monday Tuesday and even into Wednesday some peaks of Sun are possible through the middle of the week but mostly cloudy skies will be ahead of our next potential weather maker maybe a little bit of wintry precipitation moves in for Thursday and then as you can see temps do trend downward as we head to Thursday and then into Friday and maybe a few peaks of Sun there for your day on Friday but overall temperatures really heading down Dan yeah, so that does sound like a great uh, forecast for this weekend, this uh, Thon weekend. Temperatures in the 40s, and I do see the rain for the start of next week, although temperatures will be above average. And I believe last weekend we did experience a cold air mass. We did. It did happen last weekend, and I think our Weather Whiz Quiz question touched on that. Yeah, so getting back to the Weather Whiz Quiz question, what is the lowest temperature recorded in State College since November 1st? Is it A, 6 degrees? B, 8 degrees, C, 10 degrees, or D, 12 degrees? And the answer is C, 10 degrees. Yeah, and Dan, that actually happened last Saturday and Sunday. The lows for each of those days, the low temperatures, were actually both 10 degrees. And, I mean, that is the coldest air mass, at least overnight, that we've seen all uh, cold season here in Pennsylvania really it was two of the coldest nights that we've seen and may see through the remainder of winter because our extended forecast at least for next week temperatures don't seem to be going down that far I know there's still a chance as we head into March but temperatures don't look to be going down that low at least in the near future yeah and it really hasn't been a cold season around here it really has it uh, temperatures have been above average for most of the time and that has contributed to the uh, lack of snowfall around here so hopefully with the months of uh, February and March, we might be able to catch up on some of that much needed snowfall. And with that, that's all the time we have for tonight's episode of Whether or Not. I'm your host, Dan Guzman. And I'm your forecaster, Matt Yurisavik. Everybody, have a good night. <laughs>